I am Goose. I am Logan. And we're at the West Kern Oil Museum. Yeah. So Logan and I feel like we are out in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, if you look around, if us, you look it's around us, it's, it's we. we it's nothing. In fact, I'll, I'll even make do a 360 here. It's it kind of feels like almost like an, a hill of have eyes moment here, but um, we are in the great city of Taft, California. Yeah. Uh, to check out the West Kern Oil Museum. Um, it was something we've had on our list for a little bit of a while mm -hmm. uh, as it popped up and so we're gonna come in here they say they got some stuff that's really interesting to check out some stuff that's unique to the industry so um, let's get inside and take a look Go around. Check it out. Yep. So what do you got over here Logan? Just, just saw it. It's the Jameson number 17 oil there which was drilled in 1970 until 1980 scheduled to be torn down. 1974, the local American Association of University Women and several dedicated people convinced Jameson Oil Company to donate the wind derrick along with three acres of land to give to the West Kern Oil Museum. A promising start. Huh. Uh, I think that's what we saw on the way here. I was like, oh, I think that's, that's where we're supposed to go. <laughs> <laughs> I think I saw the oil there. All right, so first of all, you can see that behind me. That's actually pretty cool. Um, but um, right now we're here. It's a it's a on Friday, and we are here by ourselves. So it's interesting. They, they said, "Oh, you got kind of got to kind of got the run of the place. Um, look around, have have some good time." Uh, they have not been busy here since COVID started, which is interesting. Um, but so far, like I said, we we've gotten in here to the back of the museum in the building and. Um, we're gonna basically just walk around, take a look at a few things, and uh, and uh, just enjoy and explore the, the the museum. So this is really cool. This is a, obviously a saber tooth tiger uh, skeleton that they found. This one apparently was found uh, at the La Brea tar pits. They bring it here, but they are saying that they found a lot of similar uh, bones here in uh, McKittrick of all places. And uh, this particular specimen is part of a collection from the Rancho La Brea Department of Page, the Page Museum. It's on loan, uh, but this is really cool. This gives you an idea of what, of, of the saber tooth tigers. Look at the size of those teeth. Wow. This is some of the uh, early explorations of oil, how they were able to find it. They're, this picture here basically shows they basically had to dig it by hand, these picks and shovels and whatever it is that they could get to. And they said this, you know, when, when the oil started finally coming up, they started carrying it out with buckets. So this is crazy. Um, this was from the Buena Vista Petroleum Company. But this is crazy. The hand dug, they did hand dug wells. Damn. Nothing like, if this is back way back in the 1860s, mm. that's nothing like it is today. Yeah. Here's what a gusher looks like. So, the Lakeview Gusher. That's basically where it started, like popping out of the ground. from March 1910. This is from the McKittrick Brea pit, about one eighth mile from here. And it's a seepage which, which hundreds of Pleistocene, I'm not gonna try it, birds and animals were trapped. It was first explored in 1928 by the University of California. And the excavation was completed in 1949 by Los Angeles and Kern County Museums. Wow, well, here's some of the stuff they were able to find. From all that seepage. All these bones. Detailed model of the Larry Plunge was built to scale donated to the museum. Co-op at Larry's Plunge. Slim for health. 
picnic grounds equipped with tables. So this must have been a, uh, a place for people to go and like kind of hang out. Kind of like a, why would you say a, what would you say, like a community center or mm -hmm. something like that. Logan, what's up with all these mice? Ah, that's what you would. And this cat Dandy. over here that's doing nothing. What is it? Mouse invasion. Oh, the mouse invasion. It has been called the strangest occurrence of its kind in the history of the United States. And the story sounded implausible, but the, to the people living in the oil fields of the west side of Kern County in November and December 1926, it was all out war. Okay, it says in 1926, Miller and Lux had planted 11,000 acres of barley and maize. This turned out to be an ideal breeding place for mice, Ooh. especially since many of their natural enemies, coyote and hawks, had been almost exterminated, and one pair of mice in a year's time produced 16,146 mice. Dang. Suddenly, it started to rain. It rained and rained. The underground water level started rising and out moved the advance guard of mice seeking higher ground. <sighs> they swarmed over the headquarters community of the Honolulu Oil Company in the eastern Buena Vista Hills, only three miles from the lake bed. They crowded into fence rows, pushed into sheds and warehouses, even forging their wall way into the walls of homes. As Over 50,000 mice were killed there in one day by the use of poisoned barley. Other oil companies assigned crews to dig furrows and sow strikes and wheat around their installations. By December 4th, the mice had reached Taft, Fort City, and Maricopa. Damn! 28 mice traps in a home could not make a dent. So on January 22nd, 1927, a federal poisoner arrived to take command. As if to make the story more bizarre, his name was Piper. Stanley Piper. They were promptly dubbed the Pied Piper and the Mouse Marines. On one acre of land, they took a tally, and the figures indicated the presence of 44 million mice. Oh. Yeah. Dang. <laughs> Can you imagine going on the highway and it's just completely covered in mice? Oh. I don't even want to think about that now. Here's an early, early drugstore, of all things. Yeah, everything, bottles different stuff cinnamon oil fennel oil alcohol diluted uh, <laughs> this is crazy how they have everything out cinnamon oil cinnamon oil I don't know what in the world they do cinnamon oil over here you got a displays of early life there's the produce store the post office and the general store A little, a little clothing store, a little haberdashery over here. Oh, cool deal. Look at this. This is an early uh, operator's mm -hmm. thing. Um, can't remember what exactly what it's called, but it's like it's the operator telephone with operator. telephone operators would like plug you into your calls. Western Electric. That's oh. cool. You know, here you got a men's clothing store, the city hall, the police department. That's pretty cool though, the, the, the telephone company. Mm -hmm. I have never seen one of those. Looks like here is a display of the early Kern County, Western Kern County, the Yokuts, which must have been the uh, Native Americans that lived here in the area. Got a rattlesnake here. So no yoka would ever kill a rattlesnake. In Yoka's religion, the rattlesnake was a private secretary of Wenantan of, I'm not even gonna pronounce that, but it's basically the keeper of the hereafter. So it was his job to, uh, to crawl about and spy on the Yoka's and report back to the, the Yoka's had a rattlesnake dance, a spring ceremony to overcome the snake's supernatural power to ensure the, against the snake bites. Some grinding stones, mm -hmm. shells. Oh, nice. Thick bead made of bone, arrowheads, small ones used as bird points, bone needle. That's cool. All well, different arrowheads that they carve out of stones. There's some dolls. 
from Buena Vista Lake, Yoka Indian Tulum Tribe Arrowheads. That's cool. That's nice. It's always good to learn about the early history of your area and the Native Americans that lived here. Some of the birds. Coyote song. The Tree of Music. Huh. Elderberry. Interesting. It's one of the part telling stories and singing. They created a song to tell a story or for the activities and ceremonies of the tribe, such as Song for the Boys, Initiation in February, and the Wildflowers in March, and the Rattlesnake Ritual in April. These songs were to overcome the snake supernatural power and to ensure against snake bite. Oh, that must be like the yeah. ceremony that we're talking about over at the Rattlesnake. Looks like they got a little display here of Taft, early Taft with the railroad train coming through. It's really cool. Taft Hotel, West Side Drug Store, the Sunset Railroad, got all the oil refineries over here. It's nice. It's, I mean, this really gives you an idea, an idea of what um, uh, of the city and how you know going through the oil oil field is. And here is a display of the oil camps. Basically, I think oil camps were basically where people lived. So there were small oil camps and some large oil camps. And their phone's ringing in the background. This is pretty cool. Basically, this is how people lived in the oil camps. It was like they had their own place. Their own little house. Ooh, a vacuum cleaner. A Hoover, by the way. Oh, a Hoover vacuum cleaner. Uh... What were, what were these called? I mean, I know they're record players, but were they phonographs, right? They're phonographs. I think so, yeah. Phonographs. You got the fireplace here. Lady wearing her nice clothes and the clock. This is really cool. Like I said, that to the oil wells were fun places to play, but kids would get covered in the, the thick oh. oil. Oh. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, their moms weren't very. Uh... <laughs> a piano here with Songs some music on here. They play. We'll start for San Francisco in the morning. Have you heard about the fair and all the wonders there? Here are shown the finest products of the nation. You will not forget the sight should you see the place at night. And that's basically where the page ends. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but look at some of the recreations. They have billiards, they have pools, swimming pools, um, they have tennis rackets, some, and golf clubs. So they must have had some, some you know, camps had all the recreational facilities. That must have been like what we were looking at over the other display with the uh, the one camp with the with the pool outside of mm -hmm. it. You know, some, uh, probably what it must have been like here. You even got like a thing of dominoes here. Say that again? Oh, uh, it's one of the quotes here. It says, I do remember lying in bed at night, getting ready to go to sleep, and listening to the gas engines all around going bang, chug, chug, chug. <laughs> so while walking through the halls to the other exhibits, we stumbled upon this picture of who but Amelia Earhart at Taft Airport in on July 27th, 1932. That's so cool. Walking through the rest of the hallway, we have recipe for making oil. Not toward the back of the museum. I guess this must be the um, dedicated uh, the military. Mm -hmm. You got a nice big good flag over here. U.S. Air Force, Sonia Field, California. Huh? Oh, wow. <clears throat> you know, it's interesting. I, I turned around and I, I saw these, uh, I saw this here and it reminded me of that, um, that little, that little, I want to say toy, but you know, it's the like simulator. A, yeah. The simulator at the uh, uh, Metro Field Air Museum. Museum. It's the same colors. The same colors. And I'm like, that's kind of weird. Japanese Type 38 Arasaka rifle. 
Good Adopted grief. in 1905 and produced up until 1945, this was the standard rifle used by the Japanese forces during World War II. That thing is long. That's right. Well, it's got a bayonet on the end. I don't I see it, but that thing's still long. The rifle with bayonet attached was generally taller than the average Japanese soldier and was commonly used as a sniper rifle as it was too long and heavy to carry long distances. No, no kidding. The Airman's Handbook right here from the Air Force. There should be a chrysanthemum emblem on there. I love it. When the war is over, what will you be doing? Permanent future guaranteed qualified auto mechanics, helpers, painters, and metal men. Up to a dollar fifty per hour. Which back then was actually a lot of money. It's Gardner Field and the Warriors. Look at that. All those people there. Again, this is, again it reminds me of the Minter Field Air Museum. Mm -hmm. So this must have been like the like the the like uh, the Minter Field over on West Kern, Gardner Field. I think that's a sergeant. Three up and three down. And even got a baseball, even got a baseball uniform. The Gardner Field Flyers. Oh. They must have obviously played sports here too. We came in here and found a, a school, mm -hmm. Midway so School. School they had for all the people who lived on the on the oil fields. Really? Or oil camps. Oh, okay. That suspect. makes sense. Given that the uh, other exhibit was all about what life was like living on oil camps. Can, can you imagine having come to class in one of these seats? No. <laughs> <laughs> one of these seats? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Over here is the high school tapped Wildcats. Yeah. Athletics, there's Maricopa Cheer and Song Leaders. Again, boxing. And boxing was big in this area. Golf, archery. Tennis, here's tennis, Maricopa Tennis Club, basketball. Look at all. I mean, you got footballs here, softballs, gloves. Here's some of the history of it. Nellie Williams was the principal of Roosevelt School for many years. The president, the president, the president auditorium at Roosevelt is dedicated in her honor. Some of the history of school. Maricopa High School. Elk Hills High School, St. Mary's School, Connolly School, 1913 is the oldest school in Taft that is still occupying the original building. Oh, wow. Dang. Journalism. So all of this is like, so you were, I get, so special subjects. So, uh, so all of this basically was, you know, the, the schools that were on the, on the, uh, the oil field, you know. Oil camps. Oil camps. Okay. Is it me or do I have to ask, what is she going to use that ruler for? Uh, probably to whack her hand. What? <laughs> but she's bringing her an apple. Why would you whack her hand? Well, punishment. <laughs> Pretty common occurrence. <laughs> but I brought you an apple. Don't care. Whack. We looked over and we were like trying to figure out what this is. Look what is this? A hide robot. Hydraulically operated automatic low temperature fractional distillation apparatus. That's a mouthful. Yeah. What is it? It was this? used in 1942 from the Watson refinery. We were searching to find out how old it really is. The computer is purely mechanical, both oil and gas were run and it is said to have took a whole day to get four components. Liquid nitrogen was kept in the thermos. Dang. I mean, do we, I don't, do we, what was this thing for? That's just, <laughs> that's just what it said on the flap <laughs> right there. So. Over here is the music section, the marching bands, the St. Mary's Orchestra, all of these, the Maricopa High School Band, all of these from the uh, oil camps.
So they got more of the museum upstairs. Belt buckles donated by Ray DeClue. Ooh. That's cool. That's nice. Reporting onward. The origins of oil. Oil reserves. Origin of West Side Oil. Yeah, can you imagine look having to dig for oil like that? That would be a very tedious process. <laughs> I mean that's, that's like what the guys had to do, you know, when we were first like back in the eighteen sixties before they had like actual drills. Yeah. And derricks and whatever. That's yeah. what they had to do. Yeah. All right, say that again. So we got a thing here. It says crude oil production for the year 2003. It says oil produced in California, 761,644 barrels a day. Oil produced in the West Kern oil fields, 395,282 barrels a day. And there's 48.1% of all crude oil produced in California is from West Side oil fields. And all, five, all the top five oil fields in California are in Kern County. Wow. I think Midway Sunset Field is, is that the one this is on? I think so. I think that was set over at the, yeah, one of the exhibits towards the front. And that was from like 2003. Mm -hmm. So I wonder what it would be now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was wondering the same thing because that was 19 years 19 ago. 19 years ago, almost 20 years ago, yeah. This is number of producing wells in Kern County, 37,254. Oh, dang. Over 5,000 products are made from oil. Petroleum fuels our cars, trucks, airplanes, it runs our factories and cools and heats our homes. It paves our highways and helps supply electrical energy, but does it but it does much more than that. So here's some of the things that oil does. Uh antiseptics, bandages, bedpans, heart valves, vaporizers, cortisone, uh automobiles with you know Bodies, tires, safety glasses, oil filters, dashboards, over here at home, uh, uh, detergents, dyes, paintbrushes, paints, paint rollers, ink, refrigerants, fertilizers, you know, the garden has fertilizers, insecticides, gardening tools, patio furniture, umbrellas, you know. And, you know, he says personal adornments, so hair curlers, shaving creams, toothbrushes. Yeah, Logan, how would you like to not have your toothbrush anymore? Oh, that would not be nice. Yeah, pantyhose, cold creams, nail polish, <laughs> sunglasses. Over here is entertainment. You know, cameras, cassettes, footballs, golf balls, life jackets. Yeah, how would you like to go out on the water without your life jacket? Crayons, motorcycle helmets. All the all that stuff is made from oil, from petroleum. Got all of these household, all the different household uh, items. All the different household <laughs> items, you know, made from oil, refining oil. Her brain fart dog says they're refining. <laughs> I was like refining, mm -hmm. refining. <laughs> Fuel gas. Straight run gasoline. Oh, so she's just like different types of gas? Yeah. Water Diesel fuels, motor oils, heavy oil, coke, coke, fuel coke, carbon bricks, electrodes. Oh, coker. It's like, yeah, because see, if you look over here, all the, the different distillations gives you the different types of stuff that you need huh. for gas. It says here you're going to be transported by the pipeline, tank trucks, railroad tanks, cars, a uh, large ocean tanker, or a combination of the above. As you can see there, that's like what they're used to carry. They're trying to like transfer, get everything you run, run through pipeline to be faster mm -hmm. and more efficient. Doesn't have to be driven around by semi trucks. Well, you know, let's be honest, you know, driven around by semi trucks. What are the what are the chances of an accident happening yeah. having all that oil spilled on the yeah? 
donated by Texaco, the Getty Oil Company, Project Air Monitoring Station One. Look at all of that. That's really cool to see this. You see how I've actually been on certain plant, been uh, um, plants where all this is getting done. Really? And it's absolutely fascinating to see all the stuff that, like running through all these pipes and everything. Getty Oil Company. Uh, what does it say, Logan? Offshore drilling. Oil for thousands of years has seeped up from the ocean floor. The English navigator George Vancouver on his exploration of the North American coast noted oil floating on the surface of the ocean and named the point off Santa Barbara Coal Oil Point. This was in 1772. Wait, this was in 1772? Mm -hmm. It says, Today, offshore platforms lie off the California coast. Some are under state jurisdiction. Those further than three nautical miles are under federal jurisdiction. The state of California receives royalties from offshore oil and gas production. So I think there you got what they all look like. These offshore uh, drilling. Mm -hmm. Drilling equipment is removed from the platform as soon as all the necessary wells in the area are drilled and only the production equipment remains. Our model of God Gale is... So that must be that. must be that. Yeah. That's an offshore drilling plant. Okay. That's cool. That is cool. What are these over here? Power that ran the fields. So steam was the primary power source for many years, but in California oil fields, steam was soon replaced by one-cylinder horizontal gas engines as soon as gas was available in the producing areas. Really? What? There you got, there you got 1902 miniature gas engine, hand-built by B.D. Dennis of Taft when he was only 17. This was built by a 17-year-old? Mm -hmm. This is a miniature model gas engine of the same type used to operate oil wells in the Midway Sunset oil field from about 1900 to 1940. Nice. Wow. This is called the Christmas tree. The oil zone is a high pressure form. Well, a series of valves called a Christmas tree is attached to the tubing and casing at the surface. The rate of flow of oil and gas can then be regulated by the valves of the Christmas tree. Nice. Okay, just in case like there's too much oil flowing at one time. Yeah. So here they talk about the different types of drilling. This one's rotary drilling, obviously using some type of a rotary um, system that helps drill the oil up. Mm -hmm. It'd be cool if we could like press a button and see how it runs. Like yeah. we had, there was over at the, towards the front of the museum with the oil there. Yeah. You're able to spin it and see how it moves. And then this one over here is cable tool drilling. Mm -hmm. Or I guess they run cables for drilling to get the oil. The oldest method of drilling is cable tool. Mm -hmm. So basically that's how they're able to. So I guess a lot of those oil derricks we see, like we still have the cables attached. Mm -hmm. they do, they probably that's what they're using to drill the oil. Oh, okay. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. The ones that look like these cables. Yeah, them. yeah. Ah, okay. This was called a forest of derricks. In the late 1920s, there were over 7,000 wooden derricks on the west side of Kern County. So this is what they would look like. So you'd see like a bunch of them all together. Hey, didn't we see one of these at the Kern County Museum? One of these yeah, big they, ones? Yeah, they got one there. They got a big too. one there. So we finish up inside. Now we come back outside. We're going to take a look at some of the stuff around here uh, before we head on out. So that's really cool. Some of the stuff, again, one of the things I love about museums is you learn about stuff you would not have, you know, would not have learned before. Mm -hmm. So. It's interesting to learn about stuff I see every day. Yeah. But I've never had a chance to learn about. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's so, bigger than the one they got at the Kirk County Museum. That thing is humongous. That's the Jameson number two, what, 17. 17. Uh -huh. I mean, just standing here, we're not even, we're like, here's this nice little gazebo we were coming towards, mm -hmm. and the flagpole, and here's this giant oil derrick. And that's when they said in there how, because of they had portable rigs, that they tore down all the derricks. Yeah. And this one standing over its original hole, is the last of its kind. Last of its kind, that is absolutely mm -hmm. huge. 
So we got up close, there's the sign for the Jameson 17, drove in 1917, 2,452 feet deep. Let me just show you, this is where, look how, that thing is huge. Imagine me having one of the guys that had to build these, like, they had an exhibit back inside about all the people who built the rigs. I mean, and of course they didn't have cranes or anything, so they just had to be up there and just, Hammering and hammering and nailing. And they said the, the only thing they had to look forward to is that they could only fall once. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's about right. <laughs> oh my gosh. We got some other stuff out here. We're looking back. There's some cranes over here. Uh, a rig over there. I mean, this is just. Five, I think. Five or eight. I think it's from 1935. I mean, just some of the stuff out here. Here's some some wheels, some oil derricks. Uh, over here is from the Berry Holding Company. This must be a couple of other oil derrick wheels. Just to give you a scale. Like, I mean, this is impressive. Joe Freegan and Jacob Hines blacksmithing. I think he's taking a break back there. <laughs> Takes taking a nap. But yeah, look at all the different stuff for blacksmithing. It's like you think you get all this hot. There are your tongs. You'd have to use. This is pretty impressive. Because for years, I think it's Joe. It's Frigo. 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 And his father collected blacksmith tools. In his backyard in Bakersfield, he had a working blacksmith shop and office. He donated most of the equipment included in the wooden forge and tools you see in our blacksmith shop. Wow. The antique anvil was donated by D. Wayne Smith. It belonged to his great-great-grandfather, John Smith, who came from Ireland to work on the Erie Canal. And the anvil was made in England. So... Look at the anvil over there. This must be the anvil he was talking about. It was brought over from England. Can you throw that? No. Ah. Can't imagine how, how, how strong you would need to be to even lift that. Lift it. Yeah. Like I'd probably end up just dropping it on my foot. Oh, God. Sounds like a nightmare. <laughs> this nice truck over here. I don't know. I don't know how old this is, and I don't even know what it was for. California horseless carriage. <laughs> oh, nah. that's, that's what the license plate says. Yeah. California horseless carriage. Got another rig over here. Some more wheels. This is impressive when you like actually stand next to them. Uh -huh. You get to see the mass, you know, exactly yeah, how, how big they are when you're next to them instead of looking at them. This is when you're driving by. Uh -huh. Well, this was pretty cool. Yeah, it was. Uh, this was kind of on our list. We we were kind of limited because the weather here has gotten kind of wonky. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, affected about how far out we can go. Yeah. Um, but uh, we were looking for stuff. We saw this. You actually saw this. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, I was scrolling through like museums near me and it said the West Kern Oil Museum. I was like, let's check it out. And plus, I had free admission. So, and considering Kern County is one of the largest producers of oil mm -hmm. here in California and the country, mm -hmm. and possibly the world, uh, we, we had to come here and just kind of check it out and kind of check out the history and you learn about some of the, some of the things that are, that are here. Uh, if you've got a chance to come here, I would you know, put it on I your highly recommend it. Highly recommend it's off of Highway 199 on Wood, uh, what is it, Wood Avenue? Or? I think so. 119. 119 to 33? 119 to 33, according to the nice gentleman over here. And it's really cool. It's it's not very big, but you can spend a good couple of hours oh, here yeah. checking stuff out, learn a lot about the area, learn a lot about you know the history of the area, and just learning about oil and oil refining. 
So Logan, if they want to check us out anywhere else, where they go? If you want to find all the links to our social medias, you can find them on withkoji.com slash at travel by nature. They can find links to our Twitter for our podcast, find links to our podcast, our Instagram page for Travel by Nature, and an Ask Me Anything, and a tip jar. We feel generous. Yep. And uh, if they want to help out the channel, what would they do? You can hit the like button, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and share it to your friends. Yeah, share it out to your friends. Leave us a comment. It makes us smile. From here at Taft, California at the West Current Oil Museum. I'm Goose. I'm Logan. This is Travel by Nature. Thank you for watching.